Welcome back, everybody, for what could be the grand finale of Charles Martel, our epic saga through 8th century France. But uh, it's likely going to be two videos, because this is Endgame, the Avengers Endgame. I'm pretty sure that was a movie that I watched flying over the North Pacific Ocean, half awake and half uh, <clears throat> uh, there mentally, uh, flying, I think, back from Korea. Story time over. To this day, I remember the first time my father spoke to Charles Martel. I was young and naive, and I believed that I could become as prestigious as he. I don't know if I may yet become so, but without the tales of grandfather, would I have aspired to become a warrior rather than a statesman like he had? There is an enormous difference between myself and my grandfather, however. He was practically thrown into war as a fighter and leader of men. As for myself, I was to be king before the pommel of a sword even graced my hand. Charles Martel is suspected to have wanted to die in battle amongst his men. He didn't consider himself a king of sorts. He was a leader, a general, a prince, who would fight for the battering of his kingdom no matter what the cost upon his personal life. God gave him one last chance in old age to die in battle. Provence rebelled once again with the support of the Moors. Charles was not certain uh, at the time whether the Caliphate had broken their promise or whether this was a rebellious band of Berbers that had vile intent to plunder into Francia, but he wouldn't let them, not after all he had done. The fate of his kingdom was resting in his hands. Would he let his country be brought to the heel by the Moorish horse horsemen and their faithless allies? After all this work, found uh, a great unification of kingdoms and dukes and stuff and things. Sip O Water. <clears throat> there we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um, whoa. Okay. Uh, what? Uh, the Moors in Provence move one last time against us. I will call Provence's government and. Wait, hold on. I am getting so confused. Uh, for once and for all after our victory today, as for the Saracens, they dishonor themselves by violating the treaty. We will teach them a lesson with our new men-at-arms. Kill at least 15 enemy soldiers. I guess that's our current counter. Or defeat all of your enemies. 15 is a, 1,500 is a lot. Uh, the Lombards cannot be defeated. Your fortified towers must not be destroyed. And while Charles Martel is on the battlefield, your knights have plus two attack. Okay. Uh, Charles Martin has all men available to, available to him and defeats all, all of his enemies. And he's 220. You have to invest in a strong economy. Um, okay, so we're allied with the Lombards. Uh, the Frankish kingdom's frontiers and inner lands are defended by two watchtowers. If they are destroyed, the Moors will invade with a great force. Both the Saracens and Berbers have learned their lessons from their defeats against Charles Martel, and they are now fielding even more powerful anti-cavalry force uh, not to not be defeated by your heavily armored men on horseback. Your knights, on the other hand, now have a strong foothold in the feudal system and uh, adopting the laws of chivalry. And uh, yeah, the knights are stronger. A large portion of Provence is rebellious and disorganized, and they cannot rebuild their cities and buildings. It'd be an excellent idea to get them out of the way first. Okay. And yeah, all that stuff. Uh, Charles has mustered his men for one final battle against the rebels and Moors. Charles has gotten old now. Uh, the last war and stuff. Provence have a fortified fortress near the Mediterranean. They are in their territory and well defended by castles and towers, and it will be difficult to dislodge them without heavy siege equipment. And they have a bunch of stuff. The Umayyad forces are still hanging around. Uh, their cavalry has rallied, and they have a bunch of stuff, and they have lightning strikes and stuff and things, and the Moors, or the Lombards, rather, will help against the Moors. And, uh, yeah. We, are, we stand by your side, Prince Charles. Um, yeah. Let's get a going. So, it's not like there are, you know, a bajillion enemies. Do I have two camps? I think I have two camps. Yeah, I do. Okay, Charles stays here. Just get our eco up and rolling. You have brought ruination, years of conquest, old man. I believe we will value more your head attached to a camel. Well, that's nice. I always wanted to have my uh, 
you know, be a, a, a centaur camel person or something. Uh, let's make a light cav just so we can scout around. Let's go after Provence as quickly as possible. Okay, the Lombards are Teutons, even though they have the Mediterranean architecture. Sort of. Oh, those are the locals. Oh, relics. Do I have a monastery? I do not have a monastery. Let's get one of those. I wonder if there are any side quests or anything. Yeah, Charles can just hang out in the back for now. No, not guard towers. I mean, we have a big army of cavalry right now. But yeah, the map isn't all that big. It's not like the end of the uh, Princes of Russia campaign that was like a ginormous scenario. This one actually seems a bit more manageable. Uh, the Moors haven't brought their war machines from Spain and said construct them here. If we slaughter their engineers, they'll be incapable of producing more. And, uh, yeah, nice. Oh, okay. Okay, lots of relics. Let's go scoop those guys up. Yeah, we're going to want to gather lots and lots of relics. Let's drop another town center somewhere. Just want to do all the booming. Hooray. So many relics, man. We are going to gobble them up. Yeah, we'll go after Provence first. I remember they, that's what they said to do. Uh, I'm gonna want to get some more houses. All right. Provence is... Wait, where... Where's Provence? I just assumed that the Mediterranean is, like, here, and Provence is here, and then the Umayyads are down this way, but this does not seem to be the case, since the Lombards are all the way over here. So this map, map doesn't seem to be, like, oriented north-south. You know, like, uh, how we normally look at maps. For everyday use. Anyway, we'll just get to our uh, big old economy as quickly as possible. And then just go for our uh, classic Frank army. As we do. Now, our enemies do have a very high score. But they aren't super close to us. Which is nice. Watch them be like a huge army right here. <laughs> Oh wait, relics. Let's not forget about those guys. I think I'm already going to be up to five. Yeah, I'm already going to be up to five. That's as many as you get in the standard game of multiplayer. Well, rip that guy. Okay, there's, there's uh, at least one of the fortresses of Provence. Gotta remember, 220 pop limit. Rico, is, it's getting there, it's getting there. Uh, 
It seems like we're set up in a pretty decent defensive position at the start. Another relic, man. So much gold. The Umayyads are attacking. Oh, goodness gracious, golly gee willikers. Um, oh, these guys have genbows, or heavy crossbowmen, and halves. Okay, they, they've got lots of stuff to deal with, uh, with Saracens and Berbers. Oh, whoa, 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 hold on. I'm gonna use my select all army hotkey. Let's get chivalry. Oh, jerks. Okay, um... Okay, we should be cool on villagers pretty soon. Oh wow, I lost that castle fast. That's not great. It must be confessed. Make some coustiers, why not? Oh, awesome. We held off the, uh, the Umayyads. And these guys aren't being super aggro. Oh, we already have elite Coustier. Sick. We're housed. Less than sick. Okay, these guys just have a bunch of infantry and arbs, but that infantry seems to be very few halberdiers. Wait, what? Oh, stop it. Stop being a butt. Six relics, dude. I wonder if we'll get, um... Sea Dream. Let's get Paladin. Oh my god, we have so much wood. Just be sure to check in on our allies from time to time. Oh! Uh, I mean, that's a lot of camels. Go to university. Oh, I have way too much wood. I mean, I'd love to switch into halbs, but I don't really have the resources right now. Oh, are these guys any help? But they're already getting wrecked. Oh my god. Okay, maybe we were a little slow in building an army. I will admit it. I will indeed confess it. Okay, let's just let's just get started this over. We didn't have a good, uh, you know, idea of when they'd attack us. We'll, we'll use that as an excuse and we'll stick to it.
Oh, that means I'm gonna have to grab all these relics again. Damn it. But yeah, let's, let's scoop these up as quickly as possible. And honestly, we just need to be better in our macro. Need to be, be prepared for paladins plus halberdiers. Or prepared with hal paladins plus halberdiers. That's what we're making. Maybe some sergeant. Don't need gold. If you're in like a booming scenario, guys. Like say in, in multiplayer. Like say you're playing Khmer and you're doing like 24, 25 plus zero. Uh, don't be afraid to just take villagers off of gold. Like, you don't need it to, to boom. You just need food, wood, and then a little bit of stone. You can always put villagers back on gold later once you need to start getting upgrades and making units. Just get going here. I still do like the positions where we put our castles. Just need to get, get those relics going because, I mean, we saw six relics within relatively easy reach. Like, that's insane. Let's get monkering. That's a verb now. Maybe I, lo I overdid it with the uh, the booming. No, nah, who am I kidding? I, that's literally impossible. You can never overdo it with the booming. I mean, like, our macro wasn't even that focused. I'm not too worried. You know, famous last words and all that. Rusty stove. Frank Phil's are all about that rusty stove. And get another one. Okay, let's start building some stables. Just take these guys and start mining stone. You guys doing all right? I just saw my army running. Oh, it's just attacking a random camel. Hey, right, what's the thing with the towers again? Your fortified towers. Oh, these are act. These are actual main objectives. Like we actually cannot let the Lombards be defeated, and we cannot let the towers be destroyed. It's just kind of weird because they're in the same tab as the optional objectives. Okay. 
All right, another relic. Is that relic number six? Yes, it will be. Do all that stuff. Our population's getting there. And it's getting there, I feel, a lot faster than in the previous, you know, first attempt. Okay. Control group six. Get conscription. Build a bit of a better mill over here. So many bills, so little time. You guys are still doing just fine. We're at 110 vils almost. <laughs> Joan of Arc is attacking our camp. Do not let her cross the river. Paladin. Yeah, that, that should do it for a last round of villagers. Hey, why are you guys going slow? Oh, there's one pikeman. Well, uh, let's not abandon our friendos. Oh yeah, we already have Elite Coustier. That's pretty sick. Yeah, six relics. Oh, come on. Come on. Why? Oh my god, don't go after this dumbass Hussar. Alrighty. Yeah, I got 14 plus 6. Let's do it yourself, Lithuanians. You can add in some Coustiers as well. Just to spice things up. Okay, how are our allies doing? They are alright. Okay, let's grab a university. Um... Come on. Yep, here they come. This time we have at least Halb Tech prepped. Now, granted, our barracks number is still quite low. But uh, we can change that. Grab you. Oh, 
We're making it happen. We're making it happen, guys. Okay, no Seedram. That's all right. Oops, that's not what I meant. We did lose quite a few villagers, though, so let's just be sure we have our villager count good, you know, relatively. Another uh, multiplayer tip. If you lose vills in late game, make sure you replace them. I know it sounds dumb, but in the, the heat of the moment, it can be easy to just, like, lose 20 villagers and then just, you know, have that part of your economy slip away forever when uh, you don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not. Yeah, Provence we can take down. These guys just make a bunch of infantry and archers. Like, yeah, they have some halves, but we can muscle our way through them. And our paladins kill everything else, as do our coustiers. Oh look, another relic. Let's make it lucky seven. I mean, with a 220 pop limit, it's kind of like we're a little bit more than goths. So it's like, you know, we, we have more than normal pop, but it's not that much more. So something like 135-ish villagers sounds good. You know, some, something in that ballpark. Okay. Bodhi Lay! Okay, let's secure this little crossroads here. How are our allies doing, by the way? Well, they're not thriving, but they're not dead. I really hope they rebuild that siege workshop. Oh yeah, we can also grab Elite Sergeant, just for a little bit of extra meat. Wait, didn't I order a monk at some point? Ah, yes. Yeah, let's go get some sergeant. Put auto everything on. Cash eggs. Uh oh. Uh, let's send some reinforcements. Let's get you guys. Pretty good. Just litter the map with castles as Frank's... Oh, goodness gravy, we lost a lot of units. Whoa, 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 hold on. Um, What happened to the sergeants? Did I just research Elite Sergeant and Elite Sergeant is disabled? Like, only Castle Age Sar I think that's what just happened. LOL! Oh my goodness. Well, there's a lot of resources down the tubes. Okay, I think they rebuild stuff. Let's just keep these guys hanging around for the time being. Like, it's, it's a small mistake yeah, you can make, I think, in the, uh, you know, making triggers and stuff like that. Or I think uh, what Cat Scientist did is he enabled the, uh, the sergeant to train, but he never enabled the elite sergeant to train. So it's like, we can, and he also enabled the upgrade for elite sergeant. So it's like, we can get the upgrade, but then once you get the unit, or once we get the upgrade, then we can't train the unit anymore. LOL! It is all good. It's just funny.
Oh, let's get maybe a few more bells. I don't have enough of an advantage to just leave population at our allies without them being, you know, under attack. I can drop some castles nearby. I mean, I'm Franks, right? We, we, have, we can just drop castles everywhere. Yeah, Provence can't rebuild their military buildings. So again, I'm just going to focus down those. They're OP paladins. I can always trade too, I believe. I think these guys have a market. Maybe I'm mistaken. I thought I saw a trade card at one point. Oh, those guys are having a time. Forward. Wait, is that an another relic, guys? Because do you know what I don't have enough of right now? Relics. Oh, that's right. We only need to kill 1,500 to win. Or only, you know. It's kind of almost like a time limit, right? Because you're, you're going to... To not be dying, you're going to need to be killing enemy units. Yeah, just make sure we have lots of halves ready for Provence, or not Provence, uh, the Saracen Numayads. Alrighty. Uh, let's honestly just knock a, a door in here. Oh no, you guys can stay here. Where are that a trade cart? Uh, I should have some more forward siege workshops. These are kind of far away at this point. I, our wood cost is, or our wood count is still quite low, though. I do have a lot of rams queued up. Alright. It might not seem like we're making much headway, but we are, because we're killing those production buildings, and that's what's important. Against, uh, Provence, at least. Alabatai. Noise. Kill them all. Leave none standing. Treason runs in their veins. Well, you could say that their rebellion was done in vain. Quick, 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 quick. Okay. Next up is the Umeads. 
No, not the goddamn houses. Are, are you really focusing walls? Okay, let's get some forward buildings down. And it seems like these guys are going to have, like, a sprawling camp everywhere. So, I mean, they're going to kill our paladins quite quickly, but we're still going to need paladins. Just as that, uh, you know, big, beefy, population-efficient unit. Because although Frank Howells are certainly nice, you know, they're fully upgraded. They're not anything... They're not better than fully upgraded. They're not like Japanese or Slavs or something. <sighs> Size. Just get everyone grouped up. Oh. Well, that's just one trebuchet. You guys can handle one trebuchet. Please, don't just lose the castle. Please, repair! Please! Oh, come on, Lombards. SMH. Actually patrolling in. It's nice that honestly we have the uh, the sort of kill limit at fifteen hundred. Prevents the scenario from dragging on too too long. I see villagers. Uh, did I speaking of which, did I lose all of mine over here? Do I have like one villager left? That would be pretty ironic. Okay. Given the volume of units they throw at me, I'll probably hit the kill limit before I actually uh, win. I mean, and I do think I'm pretty much, you know, going to win. It's just, it would be a matter of time, right? Grinding them down. Yep, seven hundo. Oh. Oh, no! What just happened to you guys? Uh oh. Um. Hopefully that's all right. Again, I don't really care if these guys are, you know, destroying everybody. They seem to not be dead. Okay. 
It's a shame I don't really have a good uh, reason to use Throwing Axeman. You know, it is the Frank unique unit. Okay, I think we'll be able to clean everybody up. Let's try and get this castle up, though. I don't even know if we'll have a positive KD at the end, though. This one villager slowly finishing the buildings. Let's send these guys. Boop. Onward and upward. Of course, I'd love to have some more stables. Got her closer now. Why, well, hello there, Mr. Dash. Just gonna plop down next to me. Go, go, go. Yeah, now it's just going to be a huge slug fest against the uh, Umayyads. Okay, so they have some castles, they have some towers, but it's nothing nothing we can't handle. But uh forward production buildings, kiddos. Moral of this campaign. Yeah, you know, at least as best you can. Six hundred of them. No, he massacred nine hundred of them. In fact, it's pretty freaking brutal. Yeah, we're going to pretty rapidly climb in the KD department. Or just in the number of kills total. Wait a minute. I still have these siege workshops. Oh my goodness. I, I talk about having forward production and then my siege workshops are all the way back at camp. Are we at 1,000? You guys doing a okay? Good thing we have these. Oh, wait a minute. 
There's another relic. Okay, it's right next to this castle. We can't really get it. But yeah, I mean, this one's pretty much... A, this whole scenario is a, a straightforward 2v3. You know, your big final battle. We do want to make sure we keep killing units. But yeah, I mean, honestly, it's n not that hard, especially considering some of the previous scenarios that were like, you know, really hard. You know, we had the first lost. We didn't, you know, appropriately uh, <laughs> give the AI credit for how much they'd attack us with so quickly. But, you know, one once we just took that into account, we really haven't had any issues the second go around. A little bit of a scare with our allies, but other than that. Okay, now the Berbers are joining in. What the heck are you guys doing? They can get out, they just start choosing not to. Like fools. <laughs> Onward and upward. But like this is, for instance, way easier than the last scenario. Or the previous scenario, rather. Oh, and if you're wondering why I'm making Coustiers, one, because they're cool. I mean, I don't actually like their mechanic, but, you know, they're still cool looking. They're new. Uh, and also just because, you know, the castles are another production building. You know, you can produce the Coustiers and Paladins at the same time, and Coustiers aren't really that much worse than Paladins, and they're pretty cheap. The Mayan army was defeated! Uh, stable their horses, slaughter their camels, and take no prisoners, comrades! I want the Mayan army to be nothing but a pile of carcasses when we're done. Frickin' brutal, man. Maybe all they wanted was to have a nice cup of tea with you. Yeah, we are taking some losses here. Oh my god! Maybe we will defeat them before we get 1,500 kills. Okay. Got all the idle military. The right flank army. Um, well, we already defeated them, so that's kind of a moot point. <laughs> uh, they probably I don't know, they find them in their stables, man. Same place we find ours. In the magical uh, video game world that we uh, we all live in. That's a big army. It's not a very good army. It's a lot of genitors. I mean, not that genitors aren't good, it's just, you know. They're trash units. I mean, halves are trash units, but they counter what their the, the, their main unit. You know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean, guys? Uh, let's not lose the castle immediately. At least try not to. Controversially. Okay, 
Okay, 200 more kills. Yeah, this, this one's just all about macro. Ours wasn't very good the first go-around. Was much better the second time. Almost 1,400. Should be wrapping up here momentarily. Ah, yeah, within a few minutes. Oh, I have so many halves queued up. Fifty thousand people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. Yeah, they have a lot of trebuchets. Yeah, our castle kind of got leveled. But we are just about to hit our winning threshold. You know, just a, just a little bit before we win. You know, by defeating them. There we go. The Moorish army is shattered and destroyed. The Frankish army is the best in Europe. GGEZ. In my years as prince, I have proven that Europe could stand against the Moors and that our new Roman Empire had the rights to make our ancestors proud. Now I can only hope that it will survive in centuries after my death. Cat scientist, well done. You completed this large campaign. I am no well-known author and my missions aren't perfect, but I can only hope you enjoyed and I continue improving framework content. Don't worry, cat scientist. Aw, don't worry, man. You did just fine. I enjoyed. When the Umayyad spies spoke of the Lombard reinforcements coming to the aid of Charles Martel, many Moors fled, following their chieftains back to Hispania. They were already afraid of their breach and their treaty against the Kingdom of Francia, and the hammer that led his armies even in his old age. But when his already powerful armies were backed by another mighty horde of men from Italy, their morale was shattered before the battle even begun. My father said that Charles drew his sword while uh, white streaking his hair. Some Moors ran with their tails between their legs. Even the Caliph of Al-Andalusia rode off, terrified like a child with his retinue, refusing to abide to orders. His title was the bane of the Berbers, for no kingdom nor man scared them so. Finally, the wars ended, and so did the rebellions. The Caliphate sent a messenger, speaking of traitorous rebels and Berbers marching without the blessing of their leaders, and Charles Martel accepted the venomous false words of the envoys. This was his last battle, and his only struggles from then on would be political, from the comforts of his desk. My grandfather did not die like a warrior on the field of battle like he wanted. He died as a prince, a great leader, in his own bed. It was not a, what he had hoped for uh, at all, including myself. No, if any man has ever deserved a peaceful death, it was him. He never had the appearance of a prince. He wore chainmail and leathers, and a sword was always at his waist. He was like one of those chieftains of old, and yet he brought the feudal era to Europe, and many kings feasted on his reforms in many countries thanks in unwittingly to him. Charles Martel was the blessed was not a blessed son of the hope Pope. They had their differences, and the Byzantine Empire did not want him as anything but a distant ally. But all of them acknowledged, no matter who was asking, that he was a hero. Him and his armies had been the heroes that had stopped the threat from the east, the conquerors that had captured Ceuta and Carthage within days and the threat that had broken the Sasanian Empire. His name will still be remembered to this day, and we can only hope that it will be remembered for thousands of years to follow it. Every evening I sleep with the thought that I must not fail him, that I must not uh, let the Frankish Empire collapse, that I must continue his legacy, the Franks, the Lombards, and all those that believe in me. My father, grandfather had no such opportunity. He was doubted at every turn, but I had no such misfortune that plagues me. I hope one day they'll call me Charles I, the courageous, greater even than my ancestor Charles Martel, and that their trust was well placed in me. 
from tomorrow, all the crown that I'll wear, and the beginning of that, and do the things, and the unifications, and stuff. He's Charlemagne. I'm pretty sure it's Charlemagne. Yeah. Campaign by Cat Scientist. 15, 32 kills, 15 one. That's barely a positive KD. All the stuff and the things. Eight relics. <laughs> oh my goodness. You know, pretty straightforward final scenario. But fun. Good stuff. And finally, guys, we are done with Charles Martel. Oh my goodness, that is it has been a, the longest custom campaign I have uh, I have ever ever done, I think, but it was a lot of fun. It you know, it really did take us through the entire life of Charles Martel. And yeah, it, it was really cool. I enjoyed it. So, uh yeah, thank you Cat Scientist for making this campaign. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time.